So welcome to Bach in Baltimore's virtual concert series. I've been looking at the Magnificat and I hope you saw the earlier video which looked at the first half. And let's look now at the last half of the piece. We get to the text, as et misericordia, and his mercy will be on me forever. Um, and Bach, for comfort, so th this is a comforting idea. For comfort, Bach tends to use a pastorale idea. Uh, that is to say, music in one and uh, two and uh, three, so four beats that divide into three parts. And, and here we have two flutes um, and strings with their mutes on, so it's a delicate, warm, gentle sound. And you hear this kind of gentle, undulating dance of these five instruments, the flutes doubled with first and second violin and the viola playing this beautiful, comforting idea because the mercy is coming to us and, and that is of great comfort. You just heard on that beautiful recording the low instruments of the orchestra have an accompaniment and this is it I'm going to play it for you first and ask you to if you can imagine what it is so what what did what what comes into your mind well if you've studied the music of Bach, you know that he likes to use octaves to represent God. Now this is nothing but a series of octaves. And they descend in a chromatic way, don't they? So what Bach is saying is the mercy, and he's saying this only in the, in the music, this is not in the text. The mercy comes from God. But why the chromatic line descending? Because a chromatic descending line for Bach is a symbol of the crucifixion. Lutheran theology, which Bach wholeheartedly embraced, says that salvation is possible because of God's sacrifice on the cross. So the mercy flows out of the godly sacrifice in the crucifixion. All of that is a musical commentary uh, made with the instruments. It's an amazing achievement and it's all done in a very beautiful, beautiful way. The seventh movement is Fecit Potentium, for he has made me mighty with his arm. In the full chorus comes back and they have made me powerful or mighty. And they come in and they sing these fanfare-like things. Uh, that just sound like a royal, powerful thing. And then, with his arm. And as you can see in the, the score, that you have this block of sound, and then there's one line that comes out. It's like a torso with an extended arm, the almighty arm extending out. And what, and what you see is on the word potentium, he's made uh, cum brachioso with his arm. And here, here is the sound of the arm. extended line, an extended arm, and of course when that happens in the beginning, only the arm extends. The rest of the, if you will, body of singers is, um, is quiet. Our tenor now comes in in the next piece in an aria, the posui, for he has uh, put, sent the mighty away, and 
This is done, if, if we had an arm making powerful, um, now that arm, it just, with a little flick, a little flick of the almighty wrist, really, um, the powerful are knocked off their thrones. The immoral, uh, powerful leaders of the world uh, are just knocked aside. So again, each line finishes abruptly with just like a flick of the wrist, dismissing the powerful. Two flutes come in in the next movement to, to accompany the alto, and they sing, He hath filled the hungry with good things. And Bach shows this idea of, of filling, almost like um, cascades of, of flowing water. The lines flow down, the good things come from heaven above. And you can hear in this recording um, how one flute sort of comes down, then the next one comes down, and they kind of overlap, like gentle waves lapping up as as it flows into uh, humanity. So um, he has filled the hungry with good things, and with the good things flow downward from heaven above into humanity down below. Suppose you were out and about and you heard some music coming in and the doors were open and, it was, and you were allowed to come join a concert and, and when you came in you heard a, a very fine choir singing this. singing that and you, again you just wandered in and you didn't know the Bach Magnificat from cover to cover you would think you were hearing a choir that specialized in older music that piece is actually written in the style of Palestrina Palestrina was Bach's musical forebearer uh, born in 1515 so born 150 years exactly before Bach because the text here is Sicut locutus est ad patres no strum. Abraham, as he has promised to our forefathers, Abraham and his seed forever. So Bach goes back to his musical forefather and uses his musical forefather's musical style to show the, 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 the lineage of that promise which goes backward in time. Um, and just as Palestrina would have done, the melody moves by steps. <laughs> to have long notes, particularly at the beginning. Um, the, the voices come in in order, bass, tenor, alto, second soprano, first soprano, all very logical, orderly uh, approach to the composition, which is exactly what Palestrina was known for and beloved for. So he, as he promised to our forefathers, Abraham and his seed forever. Uh, it's beautiful. Now the piece ends with a Gloria Patri, glory be to the Father, and the Son and the Holy Spirit. The last text of that is, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be. And so Bach just can't resist. Um, he has a little fanfare. And then the members of the choir, uh, where they all sing together with the orchestra, then they come in with these lines. All voices coming one after another with lines going up, praise heading towards heaven. And after that short setting of the word Gloria, um, as it was in the beginning, so it shall be forever. So Bach brings back the music from the beginning. The same notes, the same or, uh, organization, the same approach, and finishes his 
wonderful oratorio, the Magnificat. It's just a wonderful, wonderful piece. And Bach and Baltimore has performed it only once in our 33 years. And I'm pleased to say that we have it on our schedule coming up in the next couple of seasons. And we hope to see you there when we perform it next. Thank you.